Welcome to another episode of Rithu the Explorer Travel Vlog. Have you ever heard of the Roman Bath Museum in York, United Kingdom? It's a fascinating place that takes you back in time to experience the grandeur of the Roman Empire. Imagine walking through the same baths that were used by the Romans over 2,000 years ago. Located in the heart of York, this small museum offers a unique opportunity to explore the remains of a Roman bathhouse. You can marvel at the Roman tiles, admire the beautifully preserved walls, and even get a glimpse of the original underfloor heating system that the Romans used. Situated right in the heart of York, concealed beneath a pub, you'll find one of the city's rare glimpses into its Roman past, the Roman bathhouse. The Roman bath, situated in St. Sampson's Square within the city of York, England, is a public house constructed above the remains of an ancient Roman bathhouse. These historical remnants were brought to light during construction when the current pub was established between 1929 and 1931, replacing an earlier inn. The Roman bathhouse primarily catered to the needs of military personnel stationed in Eberacum, the Roman name for York. As you wander through the museum, you'll learn about the daily lives of ancient Romans, their bathing rituals, and the importance of the bathhouse in their society. It's truly a journey of discovery as you uncover the secrets of this ancient civilization. Originally constructed by the 9th Legion between 71 AD and 122 AD, this complex once spanned approximately 200 square meters. However, today, only a portion of the original structure remains visible, including the caldarium, hot room, a fragment of the frigidarium, cold room, and a solitary plunge pool. In the late 4th century AD, the plunge pool in the cold room was filled with limestone blocks, suggesting that the bathhouse had fallen into disuse by then. By the 5th century AD, with the Roman withdrawal from Britannia, the remaining sections of the bathhouse likely lay in ruins. Visitors can see the remains of the hypocaust, underfloor heating system, the hot room, caldarium, the warm room, tepidarium, and the cold room, frigidarium. Roman baths resembled contemporary leisure centers, featuring spacious structures equipped with swimming pools, changing facilities, and restrooms. In addition to these amenities, they boasted hot and cold rooms, similar to modern Turkish baths. Typical elements of Roman baths are apoditerium, changing rooms, palestra, exercise rooms, natatio, open air, hot spring, swimming pool, Laconica and Sudatorium, superheated dry and wet sweating rooms, Caladarium, hot room, heated and with a hot water pool and a separate basin on a stand, labrum, Tepidarium, warm room, indirectly heated and with a tepid pool, Frigidarium, cool room, unheated and with a cold bath, often monumental in size and domed, it was the heart of the baths complex. Rooms for massage and other health treatments. Additional facilities could include cold water plunge pools, private baths, toilets, libraries, lecture halls, fountains, and outdoor gardens. Apart from bathing for cleanliness, they also partake in activities like indulge in refreshments, engage in board games like tabula, socialize with friends, receive a massage, participate in ball games such as trigon. Most of these baths harness the natural hot springs, as seen in Bath UK. These hot spring waters possessed valuable antifungal and antibacterial qualities that could provide soothing and potentially healing effects for the skin. Bathing in these springs could also lead to reduced stress levels, thanks to the minerals present in the water, facilitating a natural detoxification process. The Hippocaust system began with a furnace, usually located in a separate room or chamber of the bathhouse. In the case of the Roman baths in York, there would have been a furnace room where fires were lit to generate heat. Let's now listen to what the museum guide has to share. And it's military, you 
because we're inside a user on the fortress. You probably didn't realize. E for that. So we've excavated no more than that three percent. We need a very good ship. And this is a small part of a big leisure complex just for the soldiers who work something like this. This is actually rocks it to the civilian. Even though the swimming pool in the gym for 2,000 years ago, can you believe that? It's unreal. At least we've got parts of two of them, and we've still lots to find out. So you get to corner over there, we've got a few to die, we can call that, so we'd exercise in the gym. Move around different rooms and get the body heat up slowly. Behind that wall will be the warm room, the top of the island. The end up here, which is part of the caldera, in place some very hot rooms, we're looking down here at one of these. A head thrust on the floor heating. We've got this bit here. So they had a huge furnace somewhere over there behind the wall. It's a very hot air under the floor. Um, it's made of lead encased in concrete. A friend concrete? Yeah. Well, this is long concrete. Yeah. So, and it's very modern, isn't it? Brand new concrete? I thought that's to do with the sort of pumice from the volcanoes. Uh -huh. Did they bring it over? They brought it over as um, ballast in the boats. Vesuvian ash. You mix that in with the normal mixture and it, it makes it waterproof and very hard. If you can't get that, you get some of these tiles, broken ones, ground, grind them into a base into a, a powder uh, and you and build, build that in. Um, it's called Opus Signinum and that does the same thing. It, it seals inside a bath. Yeah. It's also a sand of water. Yeah. And yeah. it's clear. Which is that place to put in? After I heat up the floors, uh, so hot you have to wear the trees. Uh, and we used to say for many years, the base of the bath needs to be water, because we thought we were looking for that. Uh, that's the name of the book. We've changed our minds recently. I got together with our activities. We think now we're more likely to look at one of these. That's called a sumatorium, a hot sweating room. And that's a photo of a sumatorium in Pompeii. Very hot floor. Cool water in the front. Get a wooden bowl, scoop it up, throw it in. Hot floor, can you get steam? We're looking at a 2,000 year old sauna. And then they left Britain about 410 AD with us. Street fountains and baths and roads, we just started to hear about recently. And I didn't think there's anything left to find, but I've got a good palace in archaeology. Recently we was down there, see those bricks at the back? It was cleaning the mortar in between the bricks. Two Roman coins for that. Late third, early fourth century, about the time we had Constantine. The guy who sat here was outside the office. So a small museum of the book, just goes around the book, absolutely fascinating. Cameras are no problem, you put damage on the concrete. Uh, we did have to make it one way normally, um, courtesy of Covid, but the, if you go out the stairs at the back you have to go through the pub and it's here. So ignore the one way signs. Just come back out this way. Alright, All right. thank you very much. Oh you're very welcome. The first excavations of this historical site took place during the 1930s, when the ruins were serendipitously uncovered during renovations of the pub above. Subsequent excavations in 1972 on the opposite side of Swinegate unveiled additional Roman stone buildings, some standing nearly three meters tall. These structures are believed to mark the opposite end of the original baths. Observing the pillars of Pili, which aided in supporting the bathhouse floors, you can appreciate how heated air from a furnace circulated beneath, creating a steamy and hot atmosphere akin to a modern sauna. The baths resembled a combination of a gym and a spa, offering a variety of activities for visitors. Initially, one would enter the changing room, A, and disrobe, as attire was not allowed. Afterward, you could proceed to the exercise hall, accessible through door B, for a workout. Following your workout, you could relax in the tepidarium, C, warm room, and optionally apply some soothing oil to your skin. Next, you'd experience a hearty sweat session in the steamy caldarium, D, hot room. Following the sweat, a slave could scrape off the oil, C, from your body, effectively cleansing away dirt, much like soap. 
To conclude your visit, you would take a refreshing dip in the plunge pool located in the Frigidarium, e cold room, to cool down. Before departing, you might also consider purchasing a snack. The caldarium was heated using an external furnace, F, with hot air circulating through ducts, G, in the walls, and beneath the floor via a network of tiled pillars known as a hypocaust, H. This central heating system was also popular in the dining rooms, triclinia, of people's homes, especially in Britain. The baths were often adorned with depictions of underwater gods and sea creatures, painted on the walls and created in mosaic on the floors. One of the most renowned bath complexes in Britannia was located in Aque Sulis, Bath in Somerset. The entire town revolved around these baths and their temple area, which were constructed atop exceptionally rare natural hot springs. Men and women typically bathed separately, with different hours allocated for each gender. In larger cities like Londinium, London, there were separate bath facilities for men and women. However, in some regions, co-ed bathing was practiced. Wealthy Romans might even have private baths connected to their villas, country houses. The museum is adorned with informative and sometimes amusing tidbits and statistics regarding Roman life in York, displayed on placards throughout the exhibits. Visitors have the opportunity to closely examine armor, weaponry, and Roman tiles on display. A modern walkway takes visitors above the remnants of the bathhouse, offering an overhead view of its distinct sections, including the tepidarium, a warm room heated through a hippocaus system, caldarium, the hot plunge bath, and the frigidarium, a cold bath used to close the body's pores. Only a corner of the frigidarium remains intact. Although the original size remains uncertain, the robust foundation walls indicate that it was likely an expansive chamber with a stone vaulted roof. The foundation of the Frigidarium is constructed using tiles set in concrete, resting atop a clay base. Additionally, there existed a drainage outlet to carry away surplus water into an underground sewer system located beneath the pool. Adjacent to the site, archaeologists made another remarkable discovery, a remarkably well-preserved Roman sewage system that once carried wastewater away from the baths. In the sediment extracted from these sewage tunnels, a variety of small objects were found, most likely lost by people who frequented the baths, glass and bone playing counters, gold beads, and engraved gemstones from finger rings. Today, the Roman baths are open to the public daily from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. There is a small entrance fee, which contributes to the preservation and maintenance of the museum, an investment in the preservation of this valuable piece of history. Additionally, the baths are part of the York Pass scheme, offering even more accessibility to those eager to explore York's ancient past. Whether you're a history enthusiast or simply curious about the past, this museum has something for everyone. You can see tiles found on the site, some of which clearly show the impact of nails from the sandals of Romans who trod upon them before the tile had hardened after being made. Some tiles show the seal of the Ninth Roman Legion, who founded the city of Eberacum in 71 AD and the 6th Legion. For those inclined to indulge in a bit of fun, there's a dressing up corner where both children and adults can don Roman attire as in military helmets.
Additionally, you can examine replica Roman clogs, which were wooden soled shoes with leather uppers designed for use within the bathhouse. Interestingly, this bathhouse is one of two which would have served Roman York. The other is located on the opposite bank of the River Ouse at Tanner Row, in the council buildings towards the southwest of the city, which, in Roman times, would have sat outside of the city walls dating back to the 2nd and 3rd centuries AD. These baths are believed to have served the civilian population of Eberacum. So, if you find yourself in York, make sure to pay a visit to this small Roman bath museum. It's a mesmerizing experience that will transport you back in time and leave you with a greater appreciation for the wonders of the Roman Empire. We hope you enjoyed exploring the vibrant history and charm of York with us. Be sure to join us again for our next episode as we continue to delve into the intriguing stories this United Kingdom has to offer. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.